morning children hope you are all doing good uh last uh, in the last class we have studied about the chlorophyll and oxygen so today we are going to see is really sunlight useful for the process of photosynthesis as uh, we have already learned that chlorophyll molecule will trap the solar energy and that will use it for the process of photosynthesis so now today we will try to understand whether so is sunlight is really useful for the process of photosynthesis or not whether the plant is able to prepare the food material in the presence of sunlight or in the absence of sunlight so that is what are the questions in a mind so we will try to answer them today for doing this experiment so very very simple experiment what we have to take is a potted plant what we are taking here is a potted plant and this potted plant is to be kept in dark for at least 2 or 3 days dark for at least 2 or 3 days so what is the reason uh, for keeping this plant in the dark for 2 or 3 days so the reason is we want to make the plant completely de-starched so we don't want any starch to be in the leaves so if you keep in this uh, dark for some time the plant will not be able to prepare the food material and uh, we can go ahead with the experiment so we want a de-starched leaf for the experiment even after two or three days if you have any kind of doubt whether the plant has starch in it or you feel that it might have prepared the food material so you can go ahead with the same experiment which we have done for the starch taking the methylene spirit test tube and all uh, treating the uh, leave with the iodine solution so everything you can go ahead so if you have not seen that video you can go to my previous videos and you can uh, check out that experiment of starch so now after this after selecting a potted plant keep it in dark for two or three days and after two or three days you check the leaf if possible and then you start uh, you go ahead with the experiment so after taking the plant the next thing what we have to take is a, a black paper you call it as a light screen you call it as a light screen so what we are going to do is we are going to cover our black paper like this we are going to cover the paper on both sides of the leaf so if it is a leaf this part of the leaf we are covering with the black sheet and also what you have to do is you have to make a shape you have to make a shape you can make any kind of shape so here I am making a I am making this kind of a shape here so I am completely covering this particular part with black paper Okay, this particular part, everything I'm covering with the black paper. And I'm allowing this particular part to expose to the sunlight. So this whole part is covered with what now? A light screen. So which will not allow, which will not allow the light to pass through it. So, I'm also try to use two clips so that they can hold the paper with the some paper clips so that they can hold the paper with the leaf so now this is ready for the experiment now now keep it in the sunlight for uh, two or three hours or till the afternoon and after that you detach the leaf you detach the leaf and then after detaching the leaf again you have to go ahead with the starch experiment so if you don't remember the starch experiment we will go ahead with the experiment once again what we will do is we will take a beaker we will fill it with the water then take a test tube and you fill the test tube with methylated spirit and then you take the leaf and insert it in the test tube and uh, take a Bunsen burner, boil the beaker so the water will boil at the same time the spirit which is in the test tube which we placed in the beaker with water it also will boil down so once it keeps on burning the leaf will become pale in color.
color. So once the leaf becomes pale in color, what we'll do? We'll keep that uh, same leaf in a petri dish. We we'll take the dish like this, and then we'll place the we'll place the leaf in the petri dish, and then we'll treat with the iodine solution. So once you once you treat this with the iodine solution, what will happen? When you treat with the iodine solution, what happens is this particular part will be into will turn into the blue color. This part also will turn into blue color, and only the part which we have cut will turn into blue color. And whereas the rest of the the rest of the leaf which we covered with the black paper will not turn into any color. It will remain colorless. Okay. So what do you understand by this? Because we covered this leaf. Okay. Let me come once again. When you read the leaf like this, only this part will be green color. So it will turn into deep blue color. This part will turn into deep blue color. And whereas this part which you have exposed to the sunlight will also turn into blue color. All this will turn into blue color. But whereas this part which you covered with the black sheet, that particular part will not turn into blue color. What is the reason behind this? Because this light screen did not allow the sunlight to pass through it. As it has not allowed the sunlight to pass through it, it did not, this particular part did not prepare the food material. So that is the reason we can say that sunlight is absolutely essential for the process of photosynthesis. It is an energy which is required for the photo. Synthesis. So, if energy is not there, if energy is not taken by the plant, it will not be able to prepare its food material. So, see, even though we have so many plants in our houses, we are not giving it external energy. For example, if there is a pen in my hand, now it will not move on its own. I should put some energy so that, see, I'm giving it some energy so it is moving. Isn't it? In the same way, if the reactions has to take place, if the process of photosynthesis, food preparation for the whole universe, the whole world has to take place, that means there should be some energy. The plants should be given some energy. We are not giving any external energy. But whereas plant is taking energy from the sunlight. So if there is no sunlight, then the plant will not be able to prepare its food material. So it will be it should be very clear now, isn't it? Only this part which we have covered with the black shade that did not prepare the food material, but the place where we had a cut like this, isn't it? So we had we made a S-shaped cut, something that that really turned into to blue color when you when you will when you go ahead with the starch experiment. So by this we can prove that sunlight is really essential for the process of photosynthesis. Without sunlight, plant without sunlight. Plants cannot prepare their food material. Is that clear children? So if it is clear, then we'll go ahead with the next topic. So just we'll have a small rewind. What we have to take here? Potted plant, keep it in dark for two or three days and select a leaf, which is de-starch. If uh, you have any doubt, you can go ahead with the starch experiment. Take a leaf, take a black paper or a light screen place it on the leaf like this, put some clips. Before that, you cut any design shape or something, a star shape or a S shape or whatever the shape you want to cut, you can cut like that and you place it in the sunlight and after you feel that, okay, it's, it's enough or maybe in the evening, two o'clock or three o'clock or something, you take this uh, leaf, detach the leaf from the plant and then go ahead with the iodine, a starch experiment using the iodine solution. So this part will turn into blue color this part which is exposed to sunlight will turn into blue color and even this, this part which is exposed to the blue color uh, sunlight will turn into blue color but whereas the place where we have kept the black screen or black paper or light screen that will not turn into blue color because the leaf here did not receive the sunlight. So by this it's very clear that 
Sunlight is essential for the process of photosynthesis. Is that clear, children? Great. Uh, after that topic, we will see the transverse section of leaf. Transverse section of leaf. So, what is transverse section of leaf? Okay, children, now we will see the transverse section of leaf. What is transverse section of leaf? Now you can see a leaf in my hand. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just cutting the leaf like this. Now you can see here this part. Now what I have done is that I have cut the leaf transversely. Okay, so now this is a transverse section. This is the first layer and this is the last layer. So what are the things which are present in between these two layers? We are going to study in the transverse section of leaf. What are the layers which are present in between the upper layer and the lower layer? We are going to study in the transverse section of leaf. Understood? Okay. So, the first layer is the upper layer which is called as cuticle. So, this cuticle is waxy layer and it prevents water from being absorbed. So what it does is, this layer is called as cuticle. It will prevent absorption of water from outside. It will not allow the leaf to absorb water from outside. So this layer is the first layer which is called as the cuticle. Okay, now the second layer is the upper epidermis. Upper epidermis. It will be something like this. This layer is called as the upper epidermis. It is called as the upper epidermis. This upper epidermis is a kind of very thin layer. It is a kind of transparent layer and it will allow maximum light to enter into the leaf. So the penetration of the light, so the entry of the light requires nice transparent layer. So this upper epidermis is the transparent layer which will allow the light to pass inside. Is it clear? Okay. The next part is the palisade parenchyma. Here the cells are arranged in such a way, see here, they are arranged in a neat rows side by side without great uh, aid spaces and all. So you can see the palisade parenchyma here, let me write the name. Palisade parenchyma, you can see that these are tightly packed, these are tightly and also arranged side by side in neat columns. Okay, and these are the cells, or you can call them as mesophyll, which has very good number of chloroplasts in them. You can see number of chloroplasts in them because these are present on the surface layers, and these are the ones which receive the sunlight. Which because these are the layers which receive the sunlight, the light will penetrate through the cuticle, it will penetrate through the upper epidermis and then enters into the palisade parenchyma. So this palisade, palisade parenchyma will contain number of chloroplasts and the chloroplasts will contain what? Chlorophyll and this chlorophyll will absorb or it will trap the sunlight so that they can use that energy for the process of photo synthesis so the maximum the maximum absorption of sunlight takes place in the palisade parenchyma is it clear children everybody you can see here these are the cells the the cells which are present below the palisade parenchyma are called as spongy parenchyma or they are called as spongy parenchyma Chyma. These cells you can see they are irregularly placed. They are not placed in the way they 
mix of uh, palisade parenchyma are arranged they are irregular they are smaller in size when compared to the uh, palisade parenchyma and these are the major they also these cells also contain the chloroplast but not as many as which are present in the palisade parenchyma so these cells have large air spaces in between so that diffusion of gases will take place the entry of carbon dioxide inside the uh, the exit of oxygen outside so the diffusion of carbon dioxide oxygen oxygen and carbon dioxide will take place through these cell air spaces which are present in between the spongy parenchyma and moreover this air spaces will help in the diffusion of the gases okay and uh, the next thing is the layer which is called as the lower epidermis and this lower epidermis so coming to the lower epidermis it is also a protective layer of the cells it is also a vac it, it in some plants and all it will be a bit of waxy so the lower epidermis will have some pores which are called as stomata so it will have some breaks like this and you know what are present here stomata are present here so you know already what is stomata these contain the two guard cells with the empty space in between which is called as the stoma the two bean shaped cells are called as the guard cells so you can see this, these kind of stomata on the lower epidermis you already know that this lower epidermis will help in the exchange of the gases and also the stomata are responsible for releasing the water outside so whenever the water content increases in the plant that will go out in the form of transpiration and that will come out through the pores which are called as the stomata in the form of water vapor so in some areas in some uh, desert areas and all like you can see that these stomata are closed because in desert areas there will be very very scarce water so there will be very little water so they have to live with the same little water so if the stomata are open the water what will happen it will evaporate like anything so the stomata are closed with the waxy layer so that they can prevent the loss of water so these are all the different parts of the transfer section of the leaf and one more part which is very very prominent and important here is these vascular bundles so like you no know, you might confuse like where they are present you can see the vein which is coming through the leaf this one this one is the which we, which i have drawn here this is the one which is the middle vein the mid vein because these contain two vessels two vessels or two pipelines like uh, structures which will bring the water mineral salts and everything from the ground to the leaf so that they can prepare the food material and the other one that is what is what we called as the xylem this one we called as xylem which starts from the root level and then comes into the stems okay and then comes into the leaves to the vein and then it will enter into the leaf and then it will give out the required amount of water and minerals and salts and what not so everything to the leaf so that it can prepare the food material once the food material is prepared now that should be carried to the different parts of the plan so how it will be carried to the different parts of the plan again there should be some other vessel so that vessel is the phloem vessel this one is called as the phloem vessel which will help in the transportation of the food material which is prepared in the leaf to the different parts of the plant so these are all the different parts of the leaf which are present in the uh, internal structure so you can see the first one is a cuticle second one is the upper epidermis the long and columnar uh, cells which are arranged in a proper way regularly are called as the palisade parenchyma the cells which are irregularly placed are called as the spongy parenchyma and then we have the lower epidermis and then we have the cuticle so the palisade parenchyma will contain the chloroplast to trap the solar energy and lower epidermis will have the stomata to for the diffusion of the gases so these are and also there is xylem and phloem to bring the water mineral salts and all and uh, also the phloem to send the prepared food material so hope you are on you all understood the 
topic which is transverse section of leaf and also the experiment we have done that is the sunlight experiment okay children so see you tomorrow take care bye